Okay, welcome back guys. I know it's been a couple weeks since I've done a video. Um, I got a fun one here. I got some cheap forks off of Amazon for about 60 bucks. They use them on these little pit bikes. Um, it says the front's 12 millimeter. They lied, it's 15. The front on the Razor is 12 and it's got a little bit of slop. So one thing I know to get these to fit right off the bat, I'm gonna have to drill a hole here. I'm gonna tap it and then I'm gonna put a little screw. So after I tighten everything up, I'm just going to cinch that down so there isn't any slop and that's just a cheap, easy way to get rid of that. A little ghetto, but we're gonna make it work. Um, right off the bat, I noticed there's about twice the travel as these. You can just see the wear, how dirty it is right here. That's just like maybe two and a half, three inches. Not that I'm familiar with that measurement at all, but it's about two and a half, three inches. This, you can see, it's closer to like five or six. Um, so that's cool. Uh, I noticed they're a little soft, um, but we'll see. You know, when you put them together, they are... It's hard to tell with them being off the bike, but they might be a little too soft. We might need to take them apart and put spacers. Uh, something to note is the ones on the Razor are all steel, very solid um, and strong. These are kind of, they're so light, it, it scares me a little bit. And here's the triple clamps here, aluminum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all the hardware. I'm just going to go to Lowe's and buy uh, stainless everything. Now, one thing I noticed is this bolts into the triple clamp here. This bolt is really small and there's a lot of jiggle. And in here as well, when you put it into that hole, there's just a lot of jiggle. So I got a much thicker bolt here that is a perfect fit. But one thing I'm going to have to do is because the head is larger, I'm going to have to just grind down just like a sixteenth of an inch on every flat surface in order to get it to fit in there. But once I do that, that fits perfect. Uh, only thing is I'm going to have to drill this out just a tiny bit bigger i would use the original ones on the razor but it's a two bolt system and the the spacing on these two bolts is, is larger than this triple clamp surface so i do like the two bolts because i feel like it's stronger it's a huge flat surface on the bottom that sits flat where this is a little bit more teeter-tottery it might not be as strong but we'll see how it goes um so yeah so i'm replacing this bolt gonna have to drill this out um, replacing everything with stainless and we will see one thing I'm also doing while I'm in the front end is I'm going hydraulic so I know I made the rear double disc brake with and I was kind of staying true to the whole um, cable but I've made the jump I'm going hydraulic one thing to note with the hydraulic brakes is you order this kit uh, they're called zoom brakes. Everyone's ordering them and putting them on the uh, RSF 650 and the MX650. Um, one thing that everyone runs into is when you buy these kits, um, you do need to like do a little something here with the front. I'll get more into detail when I get there, but I know there is going to be a little bit of, um, I'm going to have to do something for one, there's different bolt pattern here and I'm going from, um, the cable to the hydraulic. So there's gonna be some customization, uh, probably a little bracket. Uh, I'll do a little side video on that. Um, one thing to note is the kit, they all come with their own discs, but the spacing between these are is 44 millimeters on all of these kits that they sell, because that's like the standard for mountain bikes. Um, now you have to buy a 48 millimeter distance in between these holes. And those usually come on cheaper mountain bikes and they usually come on um, kits that where they, they screw on um, kind of like a universal kit for uh, motorized bicycles in order to do um, uh, disc brakes on like a bicycle for a motorized bicycle project. Uh, so I found a kit for 30 bucks um, just for the discs. So they're 15 a piece. And then the whole hydraulic uh, set was, was $70. Sucks, I can't use the discs that the hydraulic ones come with and they're gold, so they would look really cool, but it is what it is. So I had to buy two different things and uh, we'll see how they go on. I'll keep you uh, guys updated on what's going next. So I am about, I'm about uh, halfway through right now. Um, I was working on the bike and I realized when trying to put these triple clamp on the stock bolt for this right here 
for the top tube here, because of these are aluminum, they're a little bit thicker than uh, the thin steel. And the bolt wasn't long enough. So I went to Home Depot, I got a, I believe it's a 3 8 uh, eight inches, which is the longest one they have. And it's just about a quarter inch longer than the stock. And with this, it's just long enough. So the bolt was like $2 at Home Depot, three eighths, eight inches long. Um, and it fits nicely. So I had to get that as far as customization goes. I had to also the bolts that went into here that I got from Home Depot because the one that it came with, like I said pr previous, it was they were too small. It was kind of sloppy in there and I wanted something that just fit snug and the larger bolts much stronger. Um, I just had to grind the head down, all the flat surfaces on the head to get it to slide inside of here and go into it and sit flush. So I ground those, got these two bolts. I got the, the better hardware. You see all the black. And then I got the the new top tube bolt. So that's what I had to do in order to make this work. And fingers crossed it works. So I initially said that these seemed a little bit soft and not having anything to compare them to, they do kind of feel soft. But now that I have the forks off and I can compare them side by side, it's amazing how stiff and how much more travel these have. You can see I can't even bottom them out. And look at this. It's almost a joke. Bottomed out. Right there. It's completely bottomed out. And it's like... So I'm surprised these work as good as they do con considering how little travel and all the jiggle. I mean, it should be a decent upgrade for how cheap these uh, forks are. So that's where I'm at now. Um, another thing, here is the zoom brakes I was telling you about. Everybody online, I follow this one uh, group uh, on Facebook called uh, Adult uh, Razors for Adults. Adult Razors. Um, I'll put a link down at the bottom. I, I just uh, I just started following them, so I'm not something about adult razors. But cool thing is, it's almost like a forum, and there's a bunch of advice on there, and all the dudes are are either fixing up these or the RSF uh, 650. And some of them are even souping up like little 350s and go-karts, Razor go-karts. So anything Razor really, uh, they're modifying. So, and I found a lot of good advice on there from them. So uh, a lot of guys, they use these zoom brakes and they just, they, they seem to just bolt right up. But I will do a video when I do mount these on uh, exactly what I needed to do to get them to fit. But, so I got the gold front and rear hydraulic. Those are exciting. I really wish these would fit, but like I said, the spacing is 44 millimeters and you need 48 millimeters. So I had to buy that. These rotors separate, well, 30 bucks, big deal. So in total, a hundred bucks for hydraulic brakes front and rear, you're pretty cheap. So unfortunately I can't use these. I think they look really cool, but I use the gold bolts to mount them. So at least I got something gold in there. So yep, yeah, that's where I'm at now. Um, next video hopefully will be of them on successfully and uh, my opinion on how it rides and everything. Okay guys, the forks are on, the brakes are on. Um, it wasn't easy, but let's go through it. Um, so first off, like I said in the original, uh, original video, um, in the beginning I had to replace this bolt, 3 8 8 inch. I replaced all the hardware. Um, I had to max this out all the way down. So this right here is actually flush. This plastic cap is just glued on just for looks, but it's actually flush to get it to go down as much as possible because when I bottomed the suspension out, this tire hit the frame. So in order to uh, prevent that, I maxed this out as low as I can go and it still wasn't enough. So I took these screws off and these cap are just caps that come off and I put a bunch of washers in here and then got a longer bolt under here so that it would space it down even more, give me a little bit more travel trying to get this tire not touching this. Because the suspension travel is so much more than stock, um, I didn't even think about it until I ran into it, but it's something good to know. Um, so what I did is I got very, very thick, stainless, heavy duty washers. These aren't just like the little thin washers. You would need a thousand of those um, 
in order to space stuff out with those. So I got found these really thick stainless steel washers, which I used for the wheel. So I ran six of them on this side and five of them on this side. And it was the perfect spacing for the brake and for the center. Um, I mean, yes, technically it's a little bit off center by one, but it's the perfect spacing uh, that I found that works the best with the brakes and best with the forks. Um, so those same washers that I used for here are the same washers I used in here. Same washers for the wheel, same washer for spacing out here. And um, another thing I also had to do was I tried to take these, I wanted, there was a lot of slop in here and I wanted to get rid of the slop. So in order to, you have, there's a C-clip up inside of this and you have to get it out. Well, it's impossible to get out because there's nothing to grab onto it up there. It's kind of like a one shot deal. It's supposed to go up and not come out again. So I measured it from this surface up into the C-clip and then I measured on the inside, I brought it out and then I took a, scratched a little line and I drilled a hole on each side in order to, so now that little spot where the C-clip clicks into, there's a hole there. So now I could push a pin, it compresses the C-clip enough to where I can go up and grab it and pull it down. So it was a nice little hack to get the C-clip out super fast and easy because it took me about 35 minutes to think of it because I was just up under here with with picks trying to get the C-clip out and there's nothing to grab onto, it was a mess. So yeah, I drilled a hole here, now I can pop them out. Uh, the reason I pulled them apart is because of all the slop. There's these two plastic, they go about this high up, they're plastic sleeves and it's what is supposed to keep this tight up here but they're super loose, they're super jiggly and it's a mess. So I pulled them down, I cleaned them with carb cleaner and then I taped it up with this super thick aluminum tape to space it out. So um, I squeezed as hard as I could, wrapped it about three times to give it some space. And it's not gonna give or anything like tape wood over time because it's, it's solid metal, it's aluminum. Um, and then I slid them back up and it completely pretty much took the slop out. Like it was a disaster trying to drive it up and down the street. And the second you touch the brake, click, 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 click. It's like, uh, it like wasn't even safe to drive. Now, the way it sits now, it's great. Um, but it took some work. I had to take them apart. I had to space these out. I had to space these out. I had to get that longer eight inch bolt up here, different hardware, cause I didn't trust this cheap stuff. Um, and then I had to get the two bigger bolts up under here that mounted the bars down. So it's been a lot of uh, customization, um, all for just to save maybe a hundred bucks. These were 70 and I've seen some really decent ones online for like 170, 200. I honestly would just rather go with that in the future uh, or for anybody else uh, thinking to do a fork upgrade uh, because unless you're willing to put in all this work, it was a serious headache. Um, as far as the brakes go, the brakes pretty much bolted right up. These are about an inch each, an inch long. You have to get longer ones um, because this aluminum right here is much thicker, this bracket uh, over the steel one they were, were originally on. Um, and then these are an inch and a half stainless. It's the same thread that the stock um, calibers bolts use. So you can just take one of those into Home Depot, get an inch long and then an inch and a half long for these two. This is seven washers and this is four washers. And then in the rear, you can actually use the stock bolts here and then you need inch and a half here. And this is two washers and four washers. Um, but yeah, these pretty much bolted right up. Um, I didn't have to bleed them or anything. They worked right away and they've been great. I'd highly recommend the brakes, uh, the forks I am uh, have mixed feelings on. Right now they're great. Um, another thing I did while they were apart, when I was doing, uh, when I was uh, putting spacers in here to get rid of the slop, um, I actually used three of these spacers because I had a bunch and I put them at the top, then I put the spring and then I put the shaft back up in there um, in order to make it a little bit tighter because the suspension, although it was, it's, um, was a little bit stiffer than the stock, um, I'm pretty heavy, so I, I wanted it to be a little bit stiffer. And the cool thing is with the spacers up here, the, just the three washers, it's a little bit preloaded where before, um, when it was completely compressed all the way out, it was a little bit jiggly, jiggle, 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 because there was, there was no, tension on the spring but with the three spacers 
Now there's tension on the spring. It just feels all around a lot more solid when you're cruising around or when you first get on it. There's no clunks, no like nothing weird. So if you do get these forks and you want to go through all the work, um, you're going to need a lot of washers, a lot of patience, and um, you're going to have to do everything that I did if you want it to be, you know, legit and safe. Um, the brakes, no brainer. If you haven't bought them already, put them in your car to Amazon. 100 bucks total, and you can get any color you want. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I do plan on uh, upgrading the forks within the next couple of months. I'm just gonna go with like the Piranha uh, full hydraulic forks, nice thick ones, anodized. But this was fun uh, just to, uh, as kind of an experiment to see what you get for uh, 70 bucks, the cheapest forks on Amazon or anywhere for that matter. Um, not bad, but uh, I wouldn't go this route again if I knew all the work that it was gonna take. But they look good. Now they, uh, they ride good, and I just went on a 15 mile ride down in San Diego uh, with no problems. So I really can't complain, but. So one correction I would like to make that I said in the beginning of the video was that this front axle, the hole on the forks was 15 millimeters. It actually is 12 millimeters, um, but it was so sloppy that I just made the assumption it was 15. It's probably more like 13, um, but <clears throat> just to clarify, this is not 15 millimeters. It's just extremely sloppy. So you have to really tighten these down to uh, make sure that you're not gonna get any jiggle on your ride. So one other thing I'd like to touch on, uh, last but not least, is this tape. Um, I feel like I might get roasted in the comment section for taping up my forks. Um, just wanted to dissect that a little bit more. So the plastic sleeve in here slides down. Um, the inside of the plastic sleeve is what rubs here. That I lubed up with some uh, really heavy duty grease. It's the outside diameter that I cleaned with carb cleaner in order for this to stick correctly. And I put a three layers on the outside. So this tape is in between the plastic, outside of the plastic, and the inside of this gold tube. This tape is not rubbing or touching on this shaft. So I just wanted to clarify that um, so that people aren't like, oh, you know, that tape's gonna rub that metal all the way down, or you know, if maybe they don't quite understand exactly, or I didn't, maybe I didn't explain it correctly. So, another thing I wanted to touch on. All right, guys, just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for the subscriptions. Thank you for the likes. Um, if you have any questions or any details you wanna know, just uh, shoot it in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, next clip is going to be uh, me doing a little top speed run. Um, on flat ground. You can see at the top left uh, is the speed. Right under that is the uh, elevation. And you can see it stays right around 505, 502. So I'm not inclining, I'm not declining, it's flat. I know in my past video, a couple guys, um, they were commenting about how um, I was going downhill. That's the only reason I went 49. Well, I'm completely on flat land on this next video and I'm doing 47. Um, it was uh, in San Diego, right next to this little uh, lake. So uh, enjoy, thank you.